Where is my training plan? We're talking about the training plan, but I don't have my training plan. Hey, Run Junkies, welcome back to the Journey to Triathlon series. And today I want to break down the full sprint triathlon training plan. How do you train for three sports instead of one? How do you do that without overtraining? How do you fit it all in? Today we'll be looking at the training plan I am using. I'm gonna give you a quick breakdown, very brief overview, but in order to do that, I need to take you into the computer on Garmin Connect. Let me first show you the training plan I'm using and how I found it. Now, if you are in Garmin Connect, which is where I am right now, you have access to a variety of training plans for running, cycling, and triathlon. So I, you go to the sidebar menu here under training. Click on that and you find training plans. Now this shows me the sprint triathlon training plan that I selected, but I want to go into browse plans. I want to show you all of the plans that are available. 5K, 10K, half, full marathon, improving your fitness, getting started, all of these cycling. You have all a whole variety of cycling workouts and then you have your sprint triathlons and Olympic triathlons at the bottom here. Now you can search for these plans. I'm going to select triathlon, sprint distance, and level two. Because I've done triathlons before, I want to, I'm basically an intermediate triathlete. Now there are two different plans here. One of them has a heart, the other one doesn't. If you were to click on each one of these uh, triathlon training plans, they look almost identical, but there is one major difference. Now, the biggest difference between these two is that the heart indicates heart rate training. For basically almost all of the training plan, you are going by heart rate. And then the other training plan has a mix of heart rate and rate of perceived exertion. They are almost identical in how they're laid out, but the metrics are slightly different. The one that with the heart uses heart rate training, uses zone training, while this one uses a more of an effort scale with some heart rate training uh, mixed in there. Neither one has a lot more explanation than this in the guide, but again, this is level two, so it's assumed that you know a little bit about these terms. So I've selected the sprint triathlon level two plan for heart rate. Now, one more quick thing about these Garmin plans is that you can schedule them to start or end on a certain date. So I'm actually going to use a different plan because I want to show you how this works as opposed to the one that I'm already using. So I'm going to use an Olympic triathlon level one. Say you know your triathlon is going to be on September 1st. You will select your finish date as September 1st. Nine, one, and hit schedule. It will then drop into your Garmin Connect calendar. Olympic triathlon has been successfully added. So now what that means is I can go into my calendar and you will see the start of the Olympic triathlon training plan drops in automatically on June 10th. And then you just go month to month and you will see all of those workouts already planned for you in Garmin Connect. It is kind of a nice feature. Now that I've selected the plan that I'm going to use, and believe me, there are plenty of others out there, I'm leaving links to some of my favorite resources in the description below. Let's talk about what the objective of this plan really is. Well, first off, regardless of any plan, regardless of sport, the idea is to get through the training plan all the way up to and through race day without getting injured. It's meant to guide you to your goal while minimizing risk of overtraining and injury. So how do you do this when you are working out six days a week? The short answers are heart rate or rate of perceived exertion. One is a bit more scientific, the other one is a bit more objective and arbitrary. Rate of perceived exertion is okay, but many times, especially novice athletes, will underestimate how hard they're actually working, and heart rate is the best indicator of our fitness and fatigue and overall health. So the objective for the majority of these workouts is for them to be relatively easy. Stay in zones one and two for most of the time for most of the workout. Let me show you the plan itself to show you what I mean by that. Okay, so th this is the first week and a half of the plan. This is the sprint triathlon level two 
12 week plan that goes by heart rate. I, there is a lot of text here, right? I want to break this down in just the basics, okay? So this is the first four days here of week one, and then it goes into the last three days of the week, then we go into week two. Okay, lots of text here. Day one is easy running. That amounts to about 40 minutes, okay? Day two, it's an 1800 meter swim. Day three is an easy bike of about an hour and 10 minutes. Day four, swimming with some drill work. It's about 1200 meters. Day five is an easy 40 minute run with an optional second workout. We're gonna come back to that in a second. Day six is a bike run brick. So this is actually, these two workouts here are the same day. If you look at it, they're both scheduled for six one bike run brick, all right? That means you're starting off on the bike. This is a 60 minute bike ride followed by a 30 minute run. Then a rest day on day seven. So two swims, one bike, two runs, one brick workout, totaling about six hours and 15 minutes with an optional workout or what we like to call a two a day. Now, before I get to the two a day piece of it, I wanna point out something to you. Bike, zone one, 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 zone one. So the thing I wanna point out here is that all of these workouts are in zone one, super easy efforts throughout the week. Now that isn't true throughout the whole plan, but this is where we're starting. Now I wanna look at a couple of other sessions though. Now week three has a swim workout. Take a look at this. It has some time in zone one. It gets progressively higher in effort throughout the workout. Then zone two, zone three, zone four, then zone three. So you're spending a little bit of time and you're working harder and harder and harder as your swim goes along. And as you proceed through the training plan, those efforts will get tougher with higher target heart rates or perceived exertion ratings. Let's go back to that optional two a day or that second workout of the day. The coach that designed this plan brings up a really good point of working on your weakest discipline if you have the time and the energy to do that. On this particular day, I already have a run planned, so I wouldn't go out for a second run if that were my weakest sport. But since I need to work on the bike and the swim more anyway, I haven't been doing those a lot in the last four years. Those, I would pick between those two. The trick with these optional workouts is just like any optional workout if you were a runner is you don't overdo it. They're meant to be super easy zone one. And also don't add it in if you are feeling fatigued and tired and you haven't recovered properly from your first workout of the day. Working on your weakest sport is really hard, but to do well in transition, equal confidence, if not speed and efficiency, will help you a lot on race day. It would be so easy for me to just knock out four miles, lace up my running shoes and just go out for a quick four miler and call it good. But if I'm going to be equally confident in all three sports, I need to get time in the pool and on the bike. I need to spend the bulk of my time in those two sports, which brings me to my next point. Six or seven workouts in one week is a lot. We're talking over six hours of training in a week. And while yes, you might be doing that if you're training for a longer distance run, you are splitting it up among three sports. We have lives, families, jobs. We have a lot of other responsibilities that we need to pay attention to throughout the week. So what happens if life steps in and says, mm -mm, not today? If you have to skip a workout, then you would select the easiest workout in your strongest sport. So for example, for me, it would be an easy run. I would drop that easy run first and make sure I get my swims and my bikes in throughout the week. Because your efforts are so low during your training, you can kind of mix and match a little bit. You can move a swim one day and then the bike to the next day if that makes it more convenient for you. The only thing that I would caution you against is to put two swims on back-to-back -back days or likewise with the bike or the run. Try to split up each sport across a couple of days. You wanna make sure you're giving each of the muscle groups time to recover from that sport before you go back into it. And just like with running, don't make up your missed workouts. Just don't do it. As with a running training plan, most triathlon plans are built on the concept of periodization, which means you are building up 
will cross several weeks and then dropping back down for a recovery week. And then you start that process over. It may take four to six weeks to go through a single period like that. And in that recovery week, you might have an extra rest day and you might have much shorter volume. For example, in week six of this particular training plan, we drop down to five workouts instead of six or seven. And instead of over six hours of training, you're down to about four. And all of those workouts are in zone one, super easy. Now I did show you this plan just to get a general, very general idea of what to expect with a triathlon training plan and how to approach it. It can look really overwhelming when you are looking at the entire training plan all at once, when you have several weeks, maybe even a few months, and six to seven workouts a week. It looks daunting to take it all in at once. So my suggestion is take a step back, take it one workout at a time, one week at a time, and do the best you can. And also stay as consistent as you can. When you're sitting in week one and you're wondering what week 10 is gonna feel like, especially if you look at it from this perspective, it's gonna feel very overwhelming. So just put that away for a while, and when you get to it, then you'll be ready for it. And by the time you get to race day, you will be ready. The bottom line is that triathlon has a lot of elements to it and having a training plan to help you organize three sports all at once really helps set you up for success on race day. A training plan is just gonna take the guesswork out of the whole thing. So find one that works for you and you will get through it before you know it. Over the next three weeks, I'm gonna talk about the specific training elements for each of the three sports, the swim, the bike, and the run. I know last week I said I was gonna talk about the swim training first, but it felt like it was more natural to talk about triathlon as a whole and the whole training plan and how it all is laid out before I get into the specifics of each of the disciplines. So next week we will be talking about swim training specifics and tomorrow is global running day. So please come back here. I've got a special episode talking about a running injury. So please subscribe, hit that thumbs up if you like this video, and please come back tomorrow. Don't forget about the podcast. I'm leaving links to those in the description below. My question for you today is this, how do you prefer to look at a race plan one chunk at a time, or do you look at the whole thing and then break it down from there? Please let me know your thoughts, ask questions, leave comments and suggestions in the comments section down below. That's it for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Go find your awesome, we'll see you tomorrow. And until next time, happy running. Now that I've selected the training plan I'm going to use, and believe me, there are plenty. And on that particular day that we already talked about,